Welcome to the Trilateral Summit on Women's Leadership in STEM. I'm David Arnold, the president of the Asia Foundation, and it's my privilege to welcome you here today to the summit's opening event. Over the next four days, we'll be engaging with official delegations from Japan, the Republic of Korea, and the United States on the importance of fostering women leaders in science, technology, engineering, and math. We are pleased to have academic experts, corporate leaders, and civil society innovators join this robust program. Thank you all for uh, participating and welcome. We're currently at a moment that demands our best minds and leadership to solve some of the world's most pressing problems, whether it's creating a vaccine for COVID-19, solving urban congestion, or engineering new transport systems to give access and jobs to the most marginalized and isolated communities. Women contribute to the diversity of talent and expertise required for devising the best solutions to the complex issues and opportunities we're presented with and that respond to the needs of those most affected. At present, women are underrepresented in STEM fields and especially STEM leadership roles. At the Asia Foundation, we know that it's critical to ensure that women and girls have equal opportunity um, to support thriving economies and to fulfill their ambitions. Through our dedicated women's empowerment and gender equality program, we work with governments, corporations, and civil society groups across Asia through our permanent network of 18 country offices to empower women and to advance our shared gender equality goals. The three nations represented at this summit are all powerhouses in STEM fields. And yet here in the United States, women comprise only 28% of workers in STEM fields and an even lower percentage hold leadership positions. We know that the future of work will increasingly focus in STEM fields. These times of rapid change require transformative solutions to help more women enter and advance within STEM fields. We must all work together to eliminate structural barriers and the harmful gender norms that deter women from pursuing STEM careers, becoming leaders and receiving equal pay for their work. We can make a positive difference by investing in the next generation of girls and women and encouraging them to pursue STEM education and careers. Together, we can support a powerful movement of girls and women in STEM fields who can shape this new world. The Asia Foundation is pleased to collaborate with the US State Department in organizing this important summit. And we extend our thanks as well to our partner, the Middlebury Institute of International Studies. We look forward to a very productive timely discussion over the next few days. Thank you once again and welcome. This is uh, it's a great feeling to be here speaking in person like this instead of on Zoom or something. So thank you all for coming. It's, uh, it's really great for everyone to join us here today to celebrate the opening of the Japan, Republic of Korea, United States, Summit on Women's Leadership in STEM. And as we begin today's event, I'd like to recognize some of our distinguished guests in the audience. Uh, first, we have uh, the Deputy Chief of Mission, Moon Sung Hyun, from the Embassy of the Republic of Korea. From the Embassy of Japan, the Minister for Economic Affairs, Mr. Saida Shinichi. Uh, from MasterCard, Vice President Sarah English. We have our from the Department of Energy, Under Secretary for Nuclear Security, Lisa Gordon Haggerty, welcome. From the US International Development Finance Corporation, Acting Senior Vice President, Charity Wallace, welcome. And from our Bureau of Oceans, International Environmental and Scientific Affairs, Acting Assistant Secretary, Jonathan Moore. Mr. Jonathan, great. I'd also like to recognize uh, virtually our heads of delegation to this summit, whose keynote addresses will be featured throughout the conference. Japanese ambassador in charge of women's issues and special advisor to the foreign minister, Atsuko Nishimura. From the Republic of Korea, the deputy minister for economic affairs, 
Yi Sung Ho. And of course, here in person, our US Ambassador at Large for Global Women's Issues, Ambassador Kelly Curry. I would also very much like to thank our teams from the Office of Korean Affairs and the Office of Global Women's Issues for their dedication and commitment in bringing this very long hoped for event to fruition. Thank you, I know how much work went into this. Over the next four days, participants from our three countries will have the opportunity to tune into virtual panels led by top experts from the private sector, civil society, academia, and government to discuss the utmost importance of women's leadership in promoting STEM initiatives, a key driver of economic growth and a critical sector for women's economic empowerment. Our three countries' cooperation is based on shared vital interests and values, including the maintenance of stability in the Indo-Pacific region, the preservation and promotion of political and economic freedoms, respect for human rights and support for democratic institutions, and the expansion of prosperity for the peoples of our three countries and the international community as a whole. At the foundation of every aspect of our mutual ties is the human element. Our engagement to cultivate people-to-people -people ties among current and future global leaders builds enduring networks and personal relationships that promote cooperation. Now our cooperation is not just bilateral between the United States and Japan or the United States and the Republic of Korea. In areas as diverse as cybersecurity, developing new energy resources, and promoting women's economic empowerment, our three countries have partnered in effective and meaningful ways, both in the past and the future, and we hope in the future as well. But of course, much work remains. But thanks to our good friends and allies in Japan and the Republic of Korea, we are in a stronger position to further these goals. And with the opening of this trilateral summit on women's leadership in STEM, we move forward this critical goal by working together to promote women's empowerment in these future-oriented sectors. And now I'd like to turn it over to uh, Ambassador Harry Harris in Seoul and Chargé d'Affaires Joe Young in Tokyo, who have sent in welcome messages to kick off this conference. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm thrilled to be speaking with you all. Thanks, Mark, for that welcome. I'd especially like to thank Ambassador Curry and recognize Ambassador Sugiyama, Ambassador Lee, Mr. Arnold, and all the gathered business leaders, academics, and advocates for women in STEM. I'd also like to recognize ROK Deputy Minister for Economic Affairs, Lee Song-ho, and Japan's Ambassador in Charge of Women's Issue, Nishimura Atsuko, who are leading their respective delegations to this great event and whose teams have put in a tremendous amount of work to make this event possible in the midst of a global pandemic. Women's economic empowerment is a major foreign policy priority for the United States. We're committed to removing legal, regulatory, and cultural barriers that hold women back from their full and free participation in the global economy. Women should advance based on their merits, not held back because of their genetics. In my time in South Korea, I've spoken extensively about the importance of the U.S. ROK alliance, but also note with regularity the importance of the U.S. alliance with Japan as well. The reality is that no important security and economic issue in the region can be addressed without both the ROKs and Japan's active involvement. In that light, it's a privilege to lend my voice to your discussions about one of the many issues that binds the United States to our key allies in the Indo-Pacific region, our shared work promoting women's economic empowerment and full participation in every domain. I know that Korea and Japan share the same goal. In the ROK, like in the U.S., Women have not only made important strides in the workforce, they've also made remarkable achievements in their professional fields. Accomplishments that continue to have important impacts on our respective economies, legal institutions, scientific industries, and national security. This may have already been touched upon by the other speakers, but even if it has, it's worth reiterating and celebrating. I'm proud to note that just last week, four women were awarded the Nobel Prize. American poet Louise Gluck was awarded the prize in literature. Dr. Jennifer Dudna, an American biochemist, was jointly awarded the prize for chemistry with Dr. Emmanuel Charpentier from France. And Dr. Andrea Gez, an American astronomer, was jointly awarded the prize in physics with Dr. Reinhard Genzel from Germany. Now how cool is that? 
As we celebrate these individuals and their accomplishments, there's still progress to be made and opportunities for all of our countries to embrace. While today it's notable that these Nobel laureates are women, in years to come we should have so many women laureates that we stop having to point it out. This is an exciting time indeed for women in the STEM field. And I believe the world can expect more technological advances and innovation if we're able to encourage and inspire more women to study and work in STEM. The demand is clear, and as we combat the COVID-19 pandemic, it's clear that we need the best and brightest now more than ever. In the U.S., despite accounting for over half of the college-educated workforce, women make up barely one quarter of those employed in science and engineering. We can do better through early education, exposure, and the creation of ample opportunities. As of 2018, women accounted for only 17% of full-time research and development positions in the ROK. It's a tragedy for any society, especially one facing the looming challenge of a rapidly aging society, to give short shrift to one of its most valuable resources, a highly skilled, educated, and motivated portion of its population. We need to do better as free and democratic societies and we are committed to making women's economic empowerment a focus area in the U.S. ROK relationship. Last month, Korea and the United States held a roundtable on women in STEM and brought together women in business, research, and government to share best practices and to discuss how to increase female representations in STEM. I'm glad that these discussions will continue in this trilateral format. Our three countries share a deep interest in addressing inequities and barriers where they exist and creating the conditions for natural talent and ingenuity to flourish without societal and institutional constraints. We know that women's economic empowerment is not only key to economic growth in the global economy, but it is vitally important to the continued growth of our own economies in Korea, Japan, and the U.S. So thank you for coming together to take on this important issue. Working together, we can multiply our strengths share a broad range of ideas, and challenge some of our pre-held conceptions. Thank you all once again for participating and enjoy the conference. Hello, I'm Joe Young, Chargé d'Affaires at the U.S. Embassy in Tokyo. Thank you for participating in the Summit on Women's Leadership in STEM. I'm delighted to see so many participants from Japan, the Republic of Korea, and the United States gathering virtually for today's discussions. Throughout the world, science and technology are key drivers of economic and social development. In this time of high-speed technological advances, all countries need to invest in their workforces and cultivate citizens with the skills necessary to apply technology effectively. That need is particularly pronounced in our three nations. The powerful engines that drive our advanced economies rely upon workforces trained in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The future development of these technologically complex engines will require bright minds, equipped with foundational STEM knowledge, along with the drive to apply those skills and pioneer new ground, be it in quantum or nanotechnology, in the depths of the ocean or at the far reaches of outer space. We must also develop environments that will nurture success. Breakthrough ideas and new approaches to problem solving are not often born from homogeneity and the status quo. They come from diversity, from fostering inclusion and belonging, and from ensuring that our workplaces and cultures value and promote these core qualities. Research shows that diverse groups outperform more homogeneous ones. They do so by accepting differences, interacting more inclusively, and processing information more carefully. Studies also show that equal access to economic opportunities for women leads to more inclusive, sustainable growth. Despite this, women remain dramatically underrepresented in STEM fields across Japan, the Republic of Korea, and the United States. In each of our countries, we pride ourselves on valuing equality of opportunity. And each of our countries could do better. To achieve the success we seek, we need a more diverse and gender-balanced STEM workforce. For this reason, the U.S. Mission Japan is focused on the advancement of female STEM professionals in this country and to partnering with our colleagues at U.S. Mission Korea to further trilateral cooperation, exchange, and research in these fields. The U.S. Mission Japan supports a wide range of women's economic empowerment initiatives 
throughout the country, including many that promote gender equality in STEM. Over the last year, we have supported countrywide programs and conferences that highlight female scientists or STEM experts, covering topics ranging from marine plastics and outer space to technology and entrepreneurship. We have funded programs designed to foster STEM interests among young girls through mentoring, leadership development, and hands-on experience. We have also arranged dozens of school visits across the country to bring American female STEM and government leaders into classrooms to inspire the next generation of Japanese female leaders. Our team at Mission Japan has also sponsored exchanges, such as the International Visitors Leadership Program that have focused on women's leadership in STEM-related workplaces. We continue to look for opportunities to build new science and technology partnerships with Japan's various ministries to advance STEM cooperation, including promoting the advancement of women in these fields. I hope that this trilateral summit will offer all of you a variety of innovative measures to advance gender equality, as well as a clear path to implement these new approaches. Gender equality can only be achieved if we all agree on its importance and commit to making it a priority in our decision making and team building. I hope this summit will act as an opportunity to make connections across all three countries, to exchange creative ideas, and to build a support network that holds us accountable for embracing and institutionalizing these changes. Thank you again for joining us today and for the next three days of this conference. We look forward to partnering with each of you to ensure that today's conversations will lead to more inclusive, diverse, and gender equal STEM workforces in all three of our countries. Thank you. Good morning and good evening, everyone. It is such a pleasure to welcome those of you who are here at the State Department to the Department of State. It's been a long time since we've welcomed people in, and so it's great to have you here. And I want to thank my great colleagues, Deputy Assistant Secretary Knapper, for the warm welcome, and Ambassador Harris in Seoul and Charge d'Affaires Young in Tokyo for their opening messages. I am so fortunate to have such great colleagues here at the State Department who support the work that we do every single day and help us to accomplish things that we never thought possible, including pulling off this event. I also would be remiss if I didn't thank our co-organizers and, co and the people who really are making the magic happen today, our friends at the Asia Foundation and at the Middle Mary Institute. We really appreciate their flexibility and creativity in pulling together this hybrid event where we have these in-person elements and these pre-recorded and virtual elements and making it all look very smooth and polished from the outside. They're doing a great job and I really appreciate that. It's so thrilling to be here today to deliver the opening keynote and to officially kick off this incredible United States, Japan, Republic of Korea trilateral summit on women's leadership in science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM. As the head of the U.S. delegation for this event, it's my honor to be joined this week by our head of delegation from Japan, Ambassador Nishimura Atsuko. Um, ambassador in charge of, who's the ambassador in charge of women's issues in Japan, and the special advisor to the foreign minister and head of delegation for the Republic of Korea, Deputy Minister for Economic Affairs, Lee Sang-ho. These are both great colleagues who I work with across a number of different forums and who provide a lot of support internationally to the work that we're doing. I'm also pleased to be joined for this opening ceremony here in Washington by all of you, the small group of representatives from the Embassy of Japan, the Embassy of the Republic of Korea, the United States government, um, colleagues from the private sector, civil society, and academia. Thank you so much for joining us today. Although this COVID pandemic has meant that we could not hold our originally planned in-person gathering, reimagining this summit as a four-day virtual event has allowed us to open participation to an even wider audience across the United States, Japan, and the Republic of Korea, and around the world. This summit provides us an excellent opportunity for our three countries to expand and strengthen our trilateral cooperation and exchange best practices in developing and sustaining future generations of women leaders in STEM fields.
We have four exciting days of programming lined up for this summit, and we'll be joined over the course of this week by representatives from government, academia, the private sector, and civil society, who will come together to discuss the vital role that women play in advancing global STEM initiatives and the future of economic growth and prosperity in our three countries. These speakers represent not only the governments of the United States, Japan, and the Republic of Korea, but also leading private sector companies such as Google, IBM, LinkedIn, Goldman Sachs, and Microsoft. Academic and research institutes, including the Rand Corporation, the World Bank, the University of Chicago, Ewa Uni Women's University in Korea, Yamagata University in Japan, and the University of California in Berkeley and a variety of exciting and innovative startup organizations aimed at promoting women's leadership in STEM. Over the course of this week, we will take on some of the most challenging and critical topics for the promotion of women in STEM, including how we can promote diversity in STEM, how to, how to encourage more girls to pursue STEM careers, strengthening the pipeline from universities to the private sector, the need to promote an enabling legal policy and regulatory environment that supports women in STEM fields, the role that women can play in the industries of the future, and how to inspire, train, recruit, and retain the next generation of women STEM leaders. While all three of our countries have made great strides in the promotion of women's empowerment, we know that there is still much to be done, as my colleagues have mentioned. In the United States, for example, STEM fields are expected to grow at a rate of 8% in the next decade, compared to a 3.4% growth rate across other industries, adding close to a million jobs. STEM careers have a much higher earning potential than non-STEM careers. This is a crucial area of opportunity for women who currently make up less than 30% of those employed in STEM fields, despite, having, despite representing over half of the college-educated workforce in the United States. The underrepresentation of women in, in STEM is a shared challenge for our three countries, and our respective governments are committed to implementing policy reforms in collaboration with the private sector and academia to support the advancement of women in STEM fields in order to improve the overall equity and competitiveness of our economies. Promoting women's full and meaningful participation in STEM industries advances economic prosperity and growth around the world. Ensuring equal access to opportunities in STEM industries is not only essential to close the labor gap and support economic growth, but leads to more inclusive, innovative, and prosperous societies. The pandemic has also confirmed that women's economic empowerment in all areas, but specifically in STEM, is a strategic imperative for the future of the global economy. The United States is committed to ensuring women around the world have full access to economic opportunities, recognizing women as key drivers of economic growth, including the recovery from the COVID pandemic. When women are economically empowered, they invest back into their families com and communities, producing a multiplier effect that spurs economic growth and increases both prosperity and security for their families, communities, and nations. The United States promotes women's leadership and empowerment through two main activities. First, the Women, Peace, and Security Agenda, and second, the Women's Global Development and Prosperity Initiative, which work together to build stronger and more prosperous societies around the world. These two pillars of women's economic empowerment demonstrate our commitment to the full participation of women in every aspect of society, and promoting women in STEM supports both of these critical efforts. Societies that recognize the vital roles that women play politically, economically, and societally work to remove bar regulatory barriers and legal and policy constraints that keep women on the sidelines. They understand that doing this makes their societies more prosperous and peaceful. The shared commitment of the United States, Japan, and the Republic of Korea to the promotion of women's economic empowerment is more important now than ever. We know that women's full and meaningful participation in all aspects of society, including in the economy, supports democratic governance, human rights, and the rule of law, and helps to inoculate our societies against the destabilizing influence of malign actors. We believe that the shared values and mutually reinforcing efforts of the United States, Japan, and Republic of Korea to promote women's economic empowerment, particularly in the STEM fields, supports our broad vision of a free and open Indo-Pacific. This is a free and open Indo-Pacific where the unalienable rights and human dignity of all are cherished and protected. 
This summit is just the beginning for our three countries and is truly an opportunity to further our collaboration on and promotion of women's leadership in STEM and beyond as we move forward in pursuit of more secure, equitable, and prosperous societies in the United States, Japan, the Republic of Korea, and around the world. Thank you so much. Okay, well, thank you all very much for joining us today uh, to kick off this, this important summit on women's leadership in STEM, and we hope that you'll continue to join us throughout the next four days for fantastic virtual panel discussions. And to review a full schedule as well as to register online, please visit www.womenstemleaders.com.